Welcome everybody. And today we're gonna to talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you all know their names. What, what are some of their names? Grace? Nope, Pinkie Pie's not one. Uh, Brady? Nope. Cutie Pie's not one of these people either. Alex? Zygarde? Nope. Nope, Zygarde's not one. Alexa? Bob? No, I don't, even, I don't even know where you're going with that one. And uh, Wyatt? Good, Wyatt. Yep, we have Michelangelo. We have Donatello. I'm probably going to get this wrong. This might be Michelangelo. This might be Donatello. We have Raphael. And we have Leonardo. And I'm sure I got these wrong. But um, these four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are named after four Renaissance artists. So the cool thing about all this is you can get, you know the name of the four major Renaissance artists, which you will want, need to know a picture of at the end. The bad thing about knowing a lot about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is these turtles have nothing deeper to do with the Renaissance artists. Their personalities aren't the same. There's no more tie-ins other than these are the four names. All right, so when we go on to Renaissance art, the thing we focus on more than anything is like just how much the quality of the artwork went up. And we've seen pictures of art before. Here is, um, oh, let me go into present mode so you can see it a little easier. Here is a picture of a, I think this is a Byzantine painting. And you can see they're really struggling with just doing, you know, three-dimensional anything. They, their characters still look pretty flat. You know, a lot of kids at uh, Paradise Honors can draw better than this. And then you go to Japan and yes, they've got three-dimensional things going on but it's sort of a dreamlike, it's an idealistic picture. It's, it's, not, it's not realistic and it's still a single color. And then in the Renaissance, boom, Oops. you get something like this. Now, obviously I've blocked out certain parts of this because you're in sixth grade, but this is one famous painting by Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. And here, you know, you can see you know, the, the muscles in Adam in this picture. And, you know, you can see the shading going on. You can see movement. This is, this is God giving Adam like the spark of life. I believe that's what it is. I, I could be wrong. Somebody may know more about this than me. And then there's all these different uh, angels and things in the background. You know, you see movement, you see shadow, you see story, you see feeling in these in these people. You see, you know, this is a mile ahead of this and a mile ahead of that. And so how did so how did we get there? All right. This is another picture of the Sistine Chapel, which I think I'm going to talk about it uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple minutes. We're really just going through the four artists. And in the past, I've read stuff, stuff out of the book about them, but hmm, we can take a break from the book for a day. All right. The main guy is Michelangelo. And Michelangelo is sort of the, the best of the best. He's, he's known he's great in his lifetime. Everything he touches, is, is perfect. He's talented at, at everything. Today, if you want to be an artist at a certain age, you're probably either going to start to do you know, a certain type of sculpture or painting, or you're going to have a style and that's going to be the style. That's going to be the style that you do. Michelangelo could do everything. He, people loved him for his painting. And here's what we think is a self portrait of Michelangelo. And this, but that's not what he liked to do best. 
What he liked to do best was sculpture. And this sculpture is of Madonna and child. I usually ask who Madonna is. And Pearson, it's not the singer. No. Julia, yes, this is Madonna, mother of Jesus. And then, of course, the person there laying there is who? Brody? No, I don't want to have a joke answer for this one. You're right. It's, it's Jesus. It's Jesus here. And so in this scene, uh, Mary has just holding Jesus when Jesus has been taking, taken down from the cross. All right. I just feel like it's, it's harder to see on your Chromebook than it is on this four foot tall screen, but I'm going to try. I want you just to notice the level of artistry in this. If you look at Jesus's body, you can tell that he is dead in this. Look at his muscles. Look at the way that his muscles are weak. They're laying down. They're, they're on the, you know, they're not, they're not working anymore. Notice the feeling that is in Mary's face. Like you can tell how she's feeling. You can tell sadness in her and the way that, that they're holding together. Now notice, this is done from a block of marble. He's sitting there and he's carving things out of this. And yet he can make this, um, you know, yet he can make this thing, just these people have so much feeling. And to me, that's not the most impressive part of it. What do you think the most impressive part of it is? That's right, Maddie. It is, for me anyways, and for Maddie too, it is this, um, it is the, the blanket here the, that, that she is sitting on. Here, I mean, Michelangelo is just showing off what he can do. I mean, doesn't it feel like you could go up and you could touch this, you could touch this and it would be soft and you could see how it's sitting there folded. I mean, this is a rock made to look like fabric. And here, Michelangelo is showing off. He's just bragging, you know, yes, you know, I can create Jesus, I create Mary, but even with this, just this cloth, look what I can do, you know, that, that nobody else could do before me. And this sort of um, brings up attention. This is at a pretty high level, but I think it's okay to introduce it. And where is the church's role in this? All these people are in Italy. The Catholic Church is centered in Rome. So the Catholic Church is kind of all over this. And especially in the beginning, they like the Renaissance. They want people, talented people like Michelangelo, making beautiful things to tell the story of Jesus and Mary. That makes people understand the story easier. It brings people to their faith. And it just sort of shows the sophistication of the Catholic Church. So at one level, you have the church is paying money to these people. Michelangelo is not a poor person. He's not super rich, but he's not starving. Um, and, you know, here the, the Catholic Church is the supporter of this. But a lot of church people would look at this and say, Michelangelo, you're showing off here. You're showing, you're kind of replacing God with yourself by just, by just showing off your skills. So there's always a tension and, you know, people like Michelangelo were not particularly good at following religion, religious beliefs. So there's always a tension, but it's, it's, it's complicated. All right. Michelangelo didn't only sculpt and paint. He also was the architect to St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. What you want to know about Michelangelo is he could do anything. If he's doing a popsicle stick uh, bird, it's going to be the most beautiful popsicle stick bird you've ever seen. Anything this guy does is magic. And he, he, is, that his, he is that his entire life. Now, these four Ninja Turtles... They all knew of each other. Some came a little earlier, some came a little later. 
but there weren't just these four, there were dozens of people doing things and they were all trying to learn what each other were doing, but then they were also all trying to surpass, just like the city states were doing. And Michelangelo was kind of the best, but he doesn't get the, he doesn't get the recognition as the genius. The genius in this group is this guy, Leonardo da Vinci. And he's looking at the most famous painting in the world, and which is, of course, Gracie. Yes, that is correct. The Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world. Me personally, not knowing much about art, eh, it, looks, it looks great to me. Here's what I remember about this. My grandmother had a picture of Mona Lisa in her, in, uh, in her living room. It wasn't like, it's just a copy of Mona Lisa. But what my brothers told me is that Mona Lisa's always looking at you. So I need everybody to lean all the way over to this side and Mona Lisa's looking at you. And then lean all the way over to this side and Mona Lisa is still looking at you. And that just shows one of the tricks that Leonardo da Vinci could do. Um, and uh, there's a lot of stories of who is Mona Lisa. Every five years, somebody else comes up with an idea who Mona Lisa actually is. We don't really know. Every story is as good as the last one. This is a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. And you know, here, he's, a, he's an old man, but uh, you can get an idea, a sense of what he looks like. This in the last generation is probably the most famous Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, I do have it. This is the most famous Leonardo da Vinci painting and it's the Last Supper. And it has Jesus there in the center with his 12 disciples or his 12 apostles. And each of the 12 are painted here. And what happened is the church went up and said, hey, da Vinci, we need you to paint this room. And it's really just, I don't, I don't have a picture. I don't think I have a picture of it. No, I don't. It's really just this nondescript room in this chapel. You know, it's not really that especially neat of a room. It's like, well, we want you to paint a picture of the Last Supper in here. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. And he goes out and he paints this picture. And the church looks at this and says, oh my gosh, Da Vinci, this is great. This is awesome. And then over hundreds of years, people kept looking at this picture and talking about this picture. And one thing that's obvious is, is the artist is making some changes. You know, clearly all 13 of them weren't sitting at the same side of the table. Some would have been sitting at other sides. Some would have been sitting at others. But then other people look at this person and say, wait a minute. This is, this person doesn't really look like they belong. This person to me, looks like they're female. And maybe um, Leonardo da Vinci was doing something that, that is funny here. And I think at first glance, you can see, you know, Jesus has you know, some feminine features, but doesn't, you know, looks like male here. And whereas this person who the, the priest looked at and said, oh, that's, that's James. I think it's James, I, I could be wrong on this. And then other people said, wait a minute, this is Leonardo da Vinci being tricky and, and sneaking something political into this painting. He's saying, he's drawing a picture right next to Jesus saying that this was actually Mary Magdalene and that Jesus had a wife. And of course, Christians don't believe that Jesus had a wife. And also another important person in here is this guy right here. This is Peter. And here Peter's sticking his hand at the neck of this person. And what the what people suggest is Leonardo da Vinci is saying that Peter, who represents the Catholic Church, because Peter is the one who ran away from Israel and ended up in Rome and got killed there and started the Catholic Church, saying that the Catholic Church is against women. Now, maybe people are reading too much into this. Maybe this is just a man and those were feminines, it's okay for men to have long hair. Or maybe he just randomly had Peter here sticking his hand this way. You know, this guy's kind of sticking his hand 
and the, you know, other people are sticking their hands in that direction. I suspect, now, I suspect that Leonardo da Vinci knew exactly what he was doing and communicating that. Now, does that mean that Jesus had a wife? Absolutely not. It means that people 500 years ago knew about Mary Magdalene and speculated that maybe Jesus ha had a wife or he was just, just being snotty. He was just being snotty about it. All right. Da Vinci the genius didn't just stop at paintings. He designed, this is why he's such a genius. Just like Michelangelo is an artist in an artist area. Leonardo da Vinci was in everything. He designed this, which is a idea for an airplane. No, it didn't work. He designed a tank. He drew these drawings right here, which means he had to do what? That means he had to take a pregnant body and cut it open. Now, before you get horror stories, this was probably a woman who had died because lots of people died while they were pregnant back then. People died all the time. And then somebody probably dissected the body. But he wanted to know about that. He wanted to know the way muscles worked. Uh-oh, I'm running out of time. This guy is the third of them, and his name is Raphael. And he spent most of the time painting himself. And here he is at a very young age. There's about 30 different Raphael paintings of himself. And he was the guy who looked back to Greece and Rome. And here he is painting the School of Athens. And so he didn't really know what the School of Athens looked like. If you knew, the Athenians, they didn't know about arches, so they wouldn't have had something like this. But he is sort of saying things back in Greece and Rome were better. Now, what is he doing that's so cool here? He's creating a three-dimensional picture. Now, we just assume that this arch is in the front, this arch is in the middle, and this arch is in the back, and this room's really long. But this is a flat surface, and he's, and he's doing that in, on a flat surface. And what do you do is you have a thing called a vanishing point. This piece of art is called the School of Athens. And you, you know, and then the, the picture goes to an end point and vanishes and goes away. Now, who's at the center of his picture? This is Plato and this is Aristotle. And he has these ideas of all these Greek people sitting around thinking about, you know, how think about ideas, because he looked back on those ideas. Now think about it. This is a person 500 years ago making a painting about somebody over in Greece, which would have been 2,000 years ago in his lifetime. So, you know, these people really thought that Greece and Rome were the cent were, was the central thing of, of everything. Now, uh, when I was in Italy, I went to the Parthenon, which was this great Roman building. And you walk off to the side and they say, and this, you see this body in there. And it's like in the little sign says, this is the body of Raphael. And Raphael got to visit, um, and Raphael got to see, got, excuse me, he got to live the rest of his life in this greatest of Roman buildings. And when I was there a few years ago, uh, my son was a little, little kid and I, I tried to get his attention. I said, hey, this is Raphael. I'm going to be teaching about this in some years, but I've asked him. Neither my son or daughter remember it. So, but maybe some of you have been to the Parthenon and seen Raphael in Rome. Rome is a cool place to visit. If you want to go someplace in Italy, not right now, obviously, but uh, it's a great place. Okay. The last of the four of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is Donatello. And Donatello's kind of not as well known as the other one. His big thing was sculpture. And here you see one of his sculptures, David. Michelangelo is a famous David, but because we're in sixth grade, this is a very famous David too. And we're gonna teach that Donatello made David. And this is not, this is out of some kind of brass or iron. So you can, or it's, it's some kind of metal material. So you can shape it as, instead of carve it. But the thing I point out about this is, you know, this is a hunk of metal 
And this guy has, this guy, you can imagine David's personality. Now, David is a character from the Bible. And so here your people, Renaissance, 2,500 years later, are, are making up what they would think David is like. But if you look at this statue, you can tell a little bit about this guy. So ask yourself these questions. Can David tell a good joke? I think yes. Can David uh, lie to you in front of your face? I think yes. Um, can David, uh, is David friendly and outgoing? I would say yes. Is David um, caring? I would say no. Um, does David gossip? I would say yes. Um, is David fearless? I would say yes. Does David respect elderly people? I would say no. So the idea of this is that you can create, you can create a whole personality about person just by making them into a statue. And that is a big, big deal. That's a change from Greece. Where in Greece you have Leonidas and Leonidas is strong and Leonidas is brave or, you know, or the Romans and, you know, Augustus is brave and strong. It's exactly the same thing. It's just whatever the ideals of the society are, they sort of, you know, make that statue like this. No, th no, this guy, Donatello, can tell a story. And here is what we think is a self-sculpture. Notice his hairline. Very similar to something you might see a lot in some of these videos. I'm not going to tell you who. All right. There were other artists going on. And these four artists, the Teenage Mutant Ninjas, were the ones in Italy. But in other parts of the Europe, other people were painting too. And it's almost like, remember, they didn't have a technology. What technology did they not have? They did not have photographs. So before that, people would want a picture painted of themselves. And, you know, so people could remember them. because So they could remember how they looked. And then mirrors weren't very easy to get either. So... To have a picture of yourself is a pretty, pretty big deal. And here you see less, you know, massive things and more home life. This is, you know, a woman and, a, and her baby. This is probably some kind of priest teaching. So the, in, in this is called the Northern Renaissance. The pictures are more everyday. They're more nature. But don't make the mistake that they're simpler. And here's another one I hope I don't lose for everything. And I think I'm going to lose it. This is an interesting picture. And it's been by Jan van Eyck. Everybody say Jan van Eyck. And the painting is Arnolfini. Arnolfini. This painting is of, you know, a wealthy man, but not a super rich man. You can tell he's probably some kind of religious figure or some serious figure. And here he is with his wife. And to me, the wife looks pregnant. Um, and, but you see some like weird daily life things in here. What are some daily life things you would see in here? Well, you see the chandelier that they're very proud of. You see the bed over here. And then you see shoes sitting here. And of course, Almost everybody notices the dog. What's the dog doing in here? You know, why have a dog in this picture? But that's not the coolest thing about this. Coolest thing about this is this mirror right here. And so what that mirror does is it reflects back and then this is the mirror all blown up. And not only do you have the, what I wanna say are the Stations of the Cross, but I don't think there's the right number of them. There's only nine of them here. So there might be some other religious things painted on here. 
But then you see the reflection. And in this reflection, you see the woman here, the man here. But who is this guy right here? Well, that's the artist. This is Jan van Eyck painting himself, and here he is painting the painting here. It's sort of a picture within the picture. This is this guy. I'm running out of time. This is this guy showing off what he can do. Don't think simple painting, not a show off. This guy's like, yes, I can do this big painting, but I can do a whole painting within the painting in this little circle right here. All right, other painters like Durer would paint daily scenes, paint natural scenes like this. To me, this almost looks like a photograph because that's what they're, that's what they're trying to get to. All right, so we have our artists. These are the pieces of art you need to memorize. You need to know this is part of the Sistine Chapel. You need to know this is Madonna and Child, both of those by Michelangelo. St. Peter's Cathedral by Michelangelo. Mona Lisa. And The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. School of Athens by Raphael. And David by Donatello. And Arnolfini by Jan van Eyck. These are your notes. As always, please take these notes in your notebook. Got to wait for that thing to go down. At this point, if I were you, I would pause it and get your notes. Then go to this page right here. Here are your questions of the day. What is one thing Michelangelo is famous for making? What is one painting Leonardo da Vinci painted? Not my best sentence I ever wrote. And what sculpture is Donatello most famous for making? Notice I didn't say sculpted again. All right, good luck. Take care. I've just got, I'm hurrying up because I've got to go on office hours. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.